What big ears you have, Grandma, said Little Red Riding Hood. All the better to hear you with, my dear, said the big bad wolf. Eat some of this, said Red Riding Hood. And then she top decked Lethal and the wolf was defeated. The end. Oh, hello there. I was just brushing up on some classic fairy tales because, as it turns out, they've provided some fairly heavy inspiration for new Magic the Gathering expansion, Throne of Eldraine. The expansion itself sees five courts of the realm vying for dominance in the land of Eldraine, a wondrous place filled with magical creatures both foul and fair. The whole set has a really playful tone, but it also has its roots set firmly in popular folklore. A number of the cards were inspired by fairy tales, many of them old classics, but one or two more recent ones as well. So, to mark the impending release of Throne of Eldraine in Magic the Gathering Arena, and of course in your local friendly game shop, here are 14 Magic the Gathering Throne of Eldraine cards inspired by real fairy tales. This video is brought to you by Magic the Gathering. OK, let's start off with a true classic, Cinderella. This is one of the best known fairy tales of all time and, incidentally, it's one of the best represented ones in Throne of Eldraine. As I'm sure you know, Cinderella tells the tale of a beautiful and unfortunate girl forced into servitude by her wicked stepsisters who make her do all the cooking and the cleaning and they're generally horrible to her. The name Cinderella, in fact, is a joking reference to the fact she often sleeps next to the stove to keep warm at night, waking up covered in ash and, you guessed it, cinders. Anyway, the stepsisters are making ready to go to a royal ball, hoping to catch the eye of one Prince Charming, an aptly, if rather obviously named prince, who is looking to take a bride. Cinderella is distraught not to be able to go, at which point her fairy godmother turns some mice and a pumpkin into a carriage and horse, transforms Cinderella's rags into a beautiful dress, and gives her a pair of crystal slippers, warning her to be home by midnight, at which point the spell will be broken. Cinderella goes to the ball and she and the prince are instantly enamoured with one another. So much so that Cinderella loses track of time and has to flee the ball before her garb returns completely to its former state. She loses a crystal slipper in her flight and Prince Charming vows to use it to track down the mysterious woman with whom he is in love. And so, turning himself into some sort of detective slash shoe salesman, he tries the slipper on the feet of countless women, hoping to find the foot that fits the slipper, until finally he tries Cinderella's dainty little trotter and is reunited with his lady love. All very heartwarming, I think you'll agree, but how does this tie in with Magic the Gathering, I hear you cry. Five different ways, is the answer. The first card that draws from this particular fairy tale is the Charming Prince, a human noble creature who offers three possible effects on entering the battlefield. And to be fair to the card, he does indeed look like quite a charming young man, although I'm not sure what this dude in the corner is up to. If you ask me, anybody in a hat that ostentatious is probably up to something. Next is a trio of cards related to the Fairy Godmother and her pumpkin pimping ways. The Fairy Godmother herself makes an appearance with a subtle name change to Fairy Guide Mother, possibly a reference to her ability to buff up a target creature and grant it flying until the end of turn. Using this ability causes the Fairy Guide Mother to be exiled, mind you, which feels fitting. After all, the Fairy Godmother in the original tale helps Cinderella get ready for the ball and then promptly slings her hook, leaving behind a fancy magical carriage. An enchanted carriage, you might say. Just like the one in this card. A fancy ride fit for a princess, although, admittedly, it does still look rather like a pumpkin. But alas, all good things must end, and so at the stroke of twelve, the enchanted carriage must revert to its original form. Return to Nature shows the aftermath of the fairy guide mother's magic wearing off, with a pumpkin sitting in the road next to some now useless cartwheels, while two white mice flee the scene, embarrassed to be mice again after a brief stint as majestic horses. Indeed, as the card's flavour text itself says, long after the magic wore off, the mice still dreamed of glorious galloping. Poor little things. Just one card left before we're done with Cinderella, and of course, it's the famous Crystal Slipper. In a lovely nod to the original story, this card grants a creature haste when equipped, 
a reflection of Cinderella's hasty flight from the royal ball as the stroke of 12 approaches. Interestingly, it seems Cinderella herself has an entirely different name in Throne of Eldraine. While the tale is undoubtedly the same, the flavour text names her as Cassia instead, saying after the death of her mother, Cassia found that things that appear very fragile can be very strong indeed. A nice sentiment for people and shoes. From high society balls to high heights and taller adversaries now, the next two items on our list of Throne of Eldraine cards inspired by real fairy tales concern the tale of Jack and the Beanstalk. As you'll doubtless remember, Jack and the Beanstalk sees young man Jack grow an enormous beanstalk out of some magic beans. Climbing the beanstalk, Jack discovers it leads to a castle in the clouds, the home of a bone-grinding, poetry-spitting giant and his lady wife. Sneaking into said castle, Jack proceeds to rob the giant blind. During his final heist, the giant begins to chase Jack, whose mother hacks down the beanstalk with an axe, making said giant fall to his death. Jack and his mother then live happily ever after on the proceeds of his protracted crime spree. The widowed giant probably lives miserably forever after, but we'll gloss over that bit for now. We've got magic cards to discuss. The Beanstalk Giant is, fairly obviously, a representation of the giant whose life Jack thoroughly ruins during the tale of Jack and the Beanstalk. You can see him stomping about here in the card art. How powerful and tough the Beanstalk Giant is, however, depends entirely on the number of lands you control, with a strict one-to-one -one correlation. So if you've got plenty of lands out on the table, it can be a fairly intimidating opponent. If when facing one you can whittle down your opponent's lands, however, like Jack and his serial larceny, the giant is suddenly far less imposing and you should be able to take care of him with relative ease. And to hammer home the fact giants really do get a rough deal in Jack and the Beanstalk, there's the Giant Killer card. This card comes with a spicy ability that allows you to pay two mana in order to destroy a creature with four power or greater. A perfect counter to a beanstalk giant that's grown too powerful, and a potent reminder that the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Indeed, the card itself shows the beanstalk being chopped down, with the giant falling helplessly to earth in the background. Giants! They just can't catch a break! Unless you count all the broken bones from the fatal fall, that is. Anyway, moving on, the Curious Pair is our next card inspired by a real-life fairy tale. Quite matter-of-factly given the keyword human peasant and accompanied by the flavour text it's gingerbread like mother makes what is there to be afraid of, the card art depicts a couple of children breaking chunks off a gingerbread house and having a good old-fashioned scoff, while the elder of the two children looks inquisitively through the window. And what else could this card be, of course, than an interpretation of the tale of Hansel and Gretel, originally set down by the Brothers Grimm in 1812. In the story, siblings Hansel and Gretel are abandoned in the woods by their father and their stepmother, who are worried about not having enough food to go around. The children stumble across a gingerbread house which, as it turns out, belongs to a witch who's very fond of eating children. Throwing Hansel in a cage, she starts fattening him up so she can roast and eat him, and when she finally decides it is time to eat him, Gretel manages to trick the witch and push her into her own oven. The kids then escape with all of the witch's riches and live happily ever after. Is there a single child in any of these fairy tales who isn't a kleptomaniac? I ask you. Anyway, in the card we see Hansel and Gretel shortly before their capture, and although the colours in the foreground are all very bright and lovely, the background is a fairly clear indicator, as if anyone needed, that the forest definitely isn't their friend. Run away, curious pair. Exile yourselves and create a food token. The next Throne of Eldraine card inspired by a real-life fairy tale is the Glass Casket. This card exiles an opposing creature with converted mana cost 3 or less until such time as the casket leaves the battlefield, presumably because said creature is in the casket, so when the casket breaks the creature is free to escape. Clever! Glass caskets feature in a couple of different fairy tales, actually, the first being Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, and the second being the Glass Coffin, a German folktale collected by the Brothers Grimm. 
In Snow White, our heroine is poisoned by her wicked stepmother, who has disguised herself as an old crone. Taking a bite of a poisoned apple, she falls into a deep sleep, only to be awakened by true love's first kiss. The wicked stepmother hopes Snow White will be buried alive, but instead the seven dwarves with whom she lives place her in a glass casket. A year later, along comes a prince who wakes Snow White with a kiss, and everybody lives happily ever after. In the glass coffin, meanwhile, an evil wizard imprisons a young woman in a glass casket because he can't handle his advances being rejected. He also, for some reason, spends most of the tale as a bull? It's all a bit weird, but either way, fairy tale glass caskets, very good for imprisoning helpless people, and doubly so in Throne of Eldraine. Of course, the tale of Snow White wouldn't be complete without the aforementioned poisoned apple, and, true enough, the tainted fruit makes its own appearance in Throne of Eldraine with the Taste of Death card, forcing each player to sacrifice three creatures and create three food tokens. The card art on this one is absolutely stunning, although if that's what poisoned apples look like, it does leave you wondering why on earth Snow White decided to take a bite in the first place. The next card inspired by a fairy tale is my absolute favourite, the Flaxen Intruder. A brilliant twist on the classic tale of Goldilocks and the Three Bears, it shows the fair-haired protagonist standing proud with a bloody blade, a bear trap, and three taxidermied bear heads on the wall behind her. I think it's safe to say in the Throne of Eldraine version of Goldilocks, she's not so easily scared off by the bears when they return from their walk. This card is particularly good fun because it can create three bear creature tokens, Goldilocks literally summoning the ill-treated bears to fight on her behalf. The art is great, the card effect is fun and thematically appropriate, and there's just something pleasing about seeing a little girl described as a human berserker. Doesn't get much better than that. Next up is the Wishful Merfolk, a card that shows a red-haired mermaid confronting a mirror image of herself in which she's been transformed into a human with a flowing dress and legs and everything. Who else could it be then but Ariel, aka the Little Mermaid? This is another card with a tremendously appropriate effect, as the Wishful Merfolk can ditch the Defender keyword and transform into a human until the end of the round. Now, most people these days know the story of the Little Mermaid from the 1989 Disney film, but the original is actually a Hans Christian Andersen tale, and it's considerably less child-friendly than the Disney version. In the Disney film, Ariel signs a contract to become human, which gives her legs, but robs her of her beautiful singing voice. In the original, however, it also gives her the ability to dance like nobody has ever danced before. Cool. But it also constantly feels like she's walking on knives, and her feet bleed all the time. Oh, and if the prince ever marries somebody else, she'll die the morning after. No biggie. Despite her best efforts, the prince does indeed marry somebody else, at which point Ariel's sisters give her a magic knife. If she kills the prince and lets his blood spill on her feet, she'll turn back into a mermaid and avoid an untimely death. She decides not to do this and instead embraces her demise, which is pretty brutal. Still, from the text on the Wishful Merfolk card, she yearns to walk on dry land so she might take her vengeance there, you can certainly tell this card is based on the Hans Christian Andersen tale, not the Disney one. I mean, she doesn't even want to become human for love, she just wants to hurt people. Just two left on our list of Throne of Eldraine cards inspired by real life fairy tales, and the next one is the Ginger Brute. A fun word play on Gingerbread Man, this card of course depicts the tale of the Gingerbread Man, a gingerbread man who comes to life seemingly for two purposes, and two purposes only, those being running fast and being an absolute jerk. The Gingerbread Man outruns everybody in the tale, being a real smartass about it, to tell the truth, until he is eventually devoured by a cunning fox. Staying true to the subject matter, this card of course has the haste keyword, meaning only the swiftest of creatures can block him. Really though, the most striking thing about this card is the fact the Ginger Brute looks absolutely terrifying. I mean, just look at that sinister grin and the piping's all uneven, so it looks... I mean, is he drooling? 
maniacally. I've never seen such an unnerving piece of gingerbread in all my life. And finally on our list of Throne of Eldraine cards inspired by real life fairy tales, we have All That Glitters. The card itself is an enchantment representing a fairy's treasure trove, but it's the title that really drew me to this particular card, mostly because I really cannot believe they've done this. In the most contemporary fairy tale of this entire list, this card seems to be referencing the 2001 movie Shrek. Specifically the lyrics, all that glitters is gold, only shooting stars break the mold from the Smash Mouth song All Stars. And that is very, very funny. And there you have it, 14 Magic the Gathering Throne of Eldraine cards inspired by real world fairy tales brought to you by Magic the Gathering. Which one is your favourite? Are there any other fairy tales you've spotted yourself in the cards revealed so far? Let us know in the comments below. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, there are loads more from Dicebreaker for you to watch. Some of them should be on screen now, so do give one of those a click. Do like, subscribe, and ring the bell icon so you don't miss anything else from Dicebreaker. But most importantly, thank you very much for watching, and have a lovely day.